poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. The other host of Popcorn Culture, as it almost says on the newly proofed person cards. Hey, oh, I'll allow it because it's a perfect segue into yeah. uh, our new current patron, our new current, our current Patreon special offer that That's we have it. going on is a metal person card that we have designed. It's mm-hmm. going to be like a like like a business card, but similar better. in all ways, except it's a person card and lacks any form of contact info. Yeah, really. No, that's but like yeah. it tells you who we are. Exactly. And I, I actually didn't know this, but they each come in like individual sleeves, yes. I believe, which is like part of like I know the, I'm excited about the, that the production. So anyway, in the show notes, we have available the proof for the person card that we are running from now until October 25th, 2020, which is my birthday, by the by. Um, if you guys would like to check it out at our Patreon, that's patreon.com slash popcorn culture. If you are an existing patron, don't worry, you're already signed up. Already getting one. And if you'd like to check it out, all three tiers, they're the exact same value. They're they're five dollars a piece. Yeah. And it just helps us determine who is the one true host. Right. Which we- according to the person card, at least, it says Ben listed under his many titles is one true host only because he's thus far always been the one true host thus far however of course i mean who who knows what could happen in the future whether the jazzy J side of the patreon eventually rises up i can't imagine a scenario glory. where we where we have to print a new metal no no ben I was, person we, have to, card. we just have to rely on the honor system and if that happens we just trust that everyone will like sharpie that part out and they'll just or they'll like draw an arrow over to like actually over here blasphemy do, we'll just utter blasphemy honor system we we'll, you'll you'll do the right thing listener we know the honor system <laughs> the honor system as it applies to the current month we're in is proof that the honor system is non-existent we are in the month of october yeah which means trick-or-treating yeah hey, you do you, you know where i'm going with this honor system trick-or-treating Leaving oh, out a bowl, oh, 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 leaving oh, oh, out a bowl oh, oh, of candy. Oh. Please take one. Okay, Int- that's an interesting thing because yeah, please take one. As if bowl of candy person. More like please take one bowl. Am I <laughs> right? right? Yeah, yeah, you didn't specify <laughs> you what didn't kind specify. of one. I think interestingly, this this trick or treat season will be like a, a weird combination of the bowl, but. See, the bowl has always existed as like a way for people to participate in the least uh, participatory way imaginable. It's like, okay, I understand it's Halloween and I'm a member of this community and I have to give out candy, but I absolutely don't want to be running to the door all night. Right. I, You know, I'm just going to put this bowl out and I, okay, I can tick the box. Sure. Right. Now, a lot of people really enjoy kids coming up. Oh, nice costume, trick or treat. Yay, here's the candy. It's so fun. I would count myself amongst those people. Me too. I think it's very fun. But I think this year, you're going to have this weird situation where if trick or treating is allowed, I feel like even if, even if like the governor of Virginia is like, there's no trick or treating, I feel like individual neighborhoods will still be like, yeah, but we're doing trick or treating or something. It's, it's. It is. It's a weird year for it. It no, is. No doubt. It yeah. is weird. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is uh, COVID wise, but I feel like what's going to happen is uh, what people definitely don't want is a barrage of hundreds of strangers coming to their doorstep. Yes. Even though they might be wearing masks as part of their costume or whatever, just getting that many different unique people in proximity to the entrance of your house uh, and just the touching of your hand, like, or even if you're receiving the candy that you would go to this many strangers houses and have this many people's germs on the number of candy you might get. Right. Well, yeah, there's, there's just such a communal uh, aspect to to, trigger treating. Exactly. Like even the bowl itself figures, you know, if you allow, and this is like actually going to years past. One of the things that I learned is that typically what I, what what I first started doing, this was my rookie mistake was holding out the bowl. Yeah. Oh, no, no. the, The thing that I very quickly learned is that whether or not you are just leaving the bowl on your doorstep and saying please take one or literally holding it out in front of them with your two hands and say please take one they will take more than one what are you gonna do about it one uh, yeah it's like one fistful and you're like and I, like i literally caught myself a couple of times when this happened where i was like who i was almost that guy who was like i said one Wow. You, you know, like, and so what I started doing was like, they would show up and then I would, I would be holding the bowl, but I would individually place the candies into their mm. respective pillowcases. Yes. 
So, Which, by the by, only way to trick or treat pillowcase, right? Pillowcase. We had like burlap, like burlap sacks for a while. Did we? I, I can smell it in my brain. You can then. smell the burlap. I can smell it in my brain. Any the mixture of of candy variety plus the burlap. Yeah. Okay. Can, but but for sure, pillow pillowcase is the the supreme method. Yes. So, actually, it's interesting. You were going like one at a time because. We at my old house would get so few trick or treaters that we would get to the end of the night and you know Beth would have meticulously put like one piece of candy in each kid's thing and it's like you got to do way more than one because we're gonna have so much left over like you need to be like like you got to read the read the crowd <laughs> this is well no but th- this just depends on like what your what your objective of the candy bowl even is like yeah. is yours to like get to the end of the night and be like I have some Reese's and Kit Kats left over or is your is your worry that you're gonna have some Reese's and Kit Kats left over mm-hmm. like do you are you you would be averse to the idea of having candy left over I, here's what I would I would like to have like a few left a few left a few left but I don't want two bags of candy left here's a question then yeah. what would be your mentality on being like like your the kids perception of your home mm-hmm. in terms of like the score so to speak like would you want to be the house where people are like go check that one that's oh, right, a right, good right. house like, like, yeah those those people they're, they're doing multiples i think that is certainly a higher priority on my candy giving experience or like from my perspective rather than my wife i think she is more of the like we the fun is giving out the candy who cares what it is Oh, like, like so, like know. sprees. Well, uh, you, you know, you just buy like the variety bag or whatever. But to me, it'd be like I want to make sure I'm picking out the best variety bag. You know, I don't want to be handing out these, you know, the, the I I don't know, like what what are the the, the circus peanuts? Like you know, nothing with that. The, no, the, no, nothing with that. You no, know, you I'm, want what is like what is the best Halloween? You want. I think you want like the individually wrapped chocolate things. That's yeah. the that's the score. Exactly. So I I think that because they're weighty as well, like you yeah. can like feel them hit the bottom of your mm. pillowcase. It's like a it's like a, ooh yeah. It doesn't need to be like king size. Like I feel like there's in every neighborhood the world over, there's a rumored house that gave out king size candy. If bars. you got there like first, you got there first. Yeah, yeah. they're Actually, giving out full candy bars at this house. There was growing up, there was one neighborhood just down from our parents' neighborhood. So we like lived on like a road that had like subdivisions, and one of the other subdivisions, there was like this house that apparently the guy was like a rep for like an athletic store, and I think it was when I was in sixth grade, and apparently he was giving out like Heelys. I don't know if you remember oh, Heelys, but yeah. they were like shoes that had like the little like roller wheel. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my dear friends, Steven, his, I, I believe that he, his like brother got one of the pairs. Wow. And I was like, what? And so this became Amazing. a thing where like every year I was like, I want to go to that neighborhood because I want to go to the house that gives out Heelys. Like yeah. in, in my mind, it was like now as an adult, what I imagine probably happened was there was like a, this huge influx order. They had way too many. It was taking up space in the garage. And they're like, let's just make some kids nights and like hand a few of them out right and in but in my mind it was a promise right it was like no there's a house that every year this is what they do they give out like hundred dollar pairs of shoes right in your size in your size right just go to that house you can, and that was, you can get heelys that was my concern it wasn't whether or not i got them it was like Hopefully they have my size still. Yeah. Like, like I'm getting them. I'm getting them this for is sure. The night, for yeah. sure. You did have Heelys at one point. I did have Heelys. Yeah. And it was, it was amongst like the, the trends of things that became like very like popular with like a very select group of people that had like had the pairs and you would like see them like floating through the hallways and you're like, what? Like, what is this going on that I'm seeing? Yeah. And so finally, yeah, I talked mom and dad into uh, getting me a pair of Heelys, which were like, quite frankly, the most hideous shoes otherwise, because the the sole of them was like chonky. Yeah, it had to be real thick to accommodate the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like a real it was like they weren't they were not very cool looking shoes. If you weren't Heelying in them. Right. Uh, and then very quickly after I got them, just like so many other great things. They were banned and you weren't allowed to wear them to school anymore. But well, the- here's the thing, though, I always found about Heelys was that, yeah, they they were banned, but it was a very difficult thing to enforce because it was difficult for just the teacher. Like, it's not something you're like eagle eyed, ready to be on the lookout, just any kid's shoes. Like, if sure. they're not if they're not in use, then you can't really, you know, are you like lift your heel? Let me see. Hmm. Right, you know? right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. I would see it. Uh, we had this like 
breezeway at our middle school, and that was like Healy Central. Healy like Central. People were just like, yeah, ban them. Uh, banned meaning just don't do it in front of teachers. Right. Yeah. And then I feel like it didn't really stop people. I, I don't know that it super stopped people. I think that I was enough of a law abiding mm-hmm. sixth grader that like I was like pretty concerned about it though. I, see. I, I like it was it was the type of thing where I was like, I'm gonna get in school detention. If, if I get caught ISD. with these ISD, as yeah. it were. Yeah. So wow. anyway, I was very cautious about it. Anyway, that was a huge tangent from trick or treating. Trick or treating. Anyway, this year in particular, though, yeah. we, like unusual circumstances for yes. sure. Um, my expectation is there will be some inevitable people who do it. Like you live in a neighborhood where there's like, I think like a homeowners association where like a decision could be made. I feel like the, there is. And according to the Neighborhood Facebook page, which I check never, but which my wife will frequently tell me there are updates on. Okay. Which to me, I'm like, okay. Uh, but Did someone spot a bear recently? No one has spotted a bear. Oh, although wow. there is concern that, FYI, uh, the age limit to drive a golf cart is the same as driving a car. And you better believe the police will be called. And I'm like, Late, whoever you are, just let the 14 year olds drive the golf cart. Oh, it's sure. fine. It's like, fine. Yeah. Like, chill. <laughs> you, can't, you can't drive a golf cart over the speed limit. Because it has a governor on it. <laughs> yeah. That's, exactly. that's like the device that prevents it from going too fast. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Okay. So, anyway, I, as I understand it, my neighborhood in particular might be the most heavily trafficked trick-or-treating spot in our area I, in like yes i i would agree with that and as as like probably 12 13 year old kids i believe that you and i even have trick-or-treated in your current neighborhood even though we didn't live there i, as I don't kids. think i did you didn't okay i did not but i have been i've never existed in my present home during halloween right because you guys moved in like november of last year so we and so i'm so disappointed that it's it's seeming like trick-or-treating is not going to happen in a traditional sense this year right because not only do i think we are in the most heavily trafficked trick-or-treat neighborhood in the entire roanoke area but we are we out my home might be the most you are (laughs) visited spot we are like the what would have to be the first stop yeah just yeah. about i think so i, I mean so, there's like a beacon of light like you guys yeah. could put up the literal bat signal yeah. of like or the jack-o'-lantern symbol yeah okay but the the sheer irony of it so like being in this position that you are yeah to me it's almost like you should go all out like your whole house should be like You'd think like it should have jack-o'-lanterns galore mm-hmm. and and spider web cotton strands strung over the shrubberies right. oh, and yeah. such and Jay. Yeah. Maybe even some inflatables. Absolutely not. This is I, I, absolutely I wanna, not. I want to I want to push your button so hard here. Jay, uh, you should have the most inflatableized front yard in order to really bring in the troops when it comes to <laughs> having the most prominent spot in the most prominent neighborhood for trick or treating in the Tri County area. Yeah. It's not called that. No, it's not. But <laughs> There are not three counties, but I there will there will be no inflatables. No inflatables. No okay. inflatables. Tell me more about this. So is it is it the inflatable specific or are you against decorating your home for holidays? No, no, it's inflatable specific. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I think it's some it's I know some people go all out, they go real big with it, but in my opinion, I rarely, rarely see an inflatable that does just just does not look super tacky. Well, okay, sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. So, and, but then I think that like there's a variety of different styles you can lean into when it comes to home decor for holidays. Okay. Because I I would almost say that tacky is like a genre. You I know? maybe, but you can I even. Yeah. I feel like I hear what you're saying, and you can do tacky well. Okay. But I still think that the problem with so many inflatables is that they are also associated with some other like franchise. Okay. Like, like you will see Olaf or Minions or the you know the Grinch or Snoopy or something. Yeah. And it's like th- like th- these things, the whatever brand they're coming from, are not 
inherently Christmas or Halloween or whatever it is. It's okay. like they are they are a thing that has been dressed in that, but it is not that thing. Oh, sure. Like so minions, for example, like just because you put a Santa Claus hat on them, like minions in no way when you watch the film is like a Christmas movie. Correct. So like by putting a minion in your front yard, it's like, well, that's not Christmas. That's just adding a Christmas hat to a non Christmas thing. Exactly. But OK, so not. But like, like, let's just say it was like a giant pumpkin, like, mm-hmm. like absolutely no branding, just, just a big pumpkin. Yeah. Would that still be unacceptable? Why wouldn't you just have a real pumpkin? Well, how would you get a pumpkin so large as a, as an inflatable? Why would you? I just don't. It, no, I just, I don't, I don't think it would look good. No, I don't think it would look good. Okay. It, okay. it would be. No, I'm not. I'm anti-inflatable. And this is it. Okay. This is a fun fact. I realized this as we were walking. Um. We were on a walk earlier last week with the boys, and I remembered back to this paper. One of my classmates classmates read in eighth grade that the teacher deemed good enough to read to the entire class. Whoa! Yes, and it High was. Praise. I know, right? And like, hey, look at this. You must have. This must have been a really good one. Anyway, fun fact, yeah. real quick. My freshman writing professor yeah. read one of mine wow. in front of the whole class. Wow! I know. My my senior writing teacher in high school loved you loved did love me and asked me on several occasions if she could and i was way too embarrassed because i was like oh no oh no i don't think so i was i i don't know anyway this was in eighth grade so it was way before then yeah and i remember the this particular paper was about how this uh kid enjoyed this tradition his family had of driving around their neighborhood and looking at all the decor for Christmas or whatever. Yeah. And they would be like, oh, this one didn't go all out enough, or this one happened to be celebrating like Hanukkah or something, so it was nice, but not the same as, you know, the rest of the decorations, or this one had way too many inflatables, or this one, you know, it was mixing colored with white lights, or, you know, they had all these sort of things, and they would, you know, sort of like drive through and enjoy the different uh, things. But then they got back to their house, and they were like, this one was perfect. You know, this was the one that, you know, it, it met all of their whatever finicky requirements for the best, and like, that was their house. Oh, I see. Okay. So, anyway... Interestingly, later on, uh, this person turned out was also on the cross country team with us. Okay, and we later out learned where they lived, and it's in the neighborhood I live in now. No so way! I, and I'm like, I always remember that paper. So I'm like, you know what? This year, I should we should like drive around because like this this was the neighborhood they were describing, oh. and I've like always remembered this paper. But I saw their the that family uh, is now moving and. So actually on, on the walk, I saw out on like they were like, you know, purging their home. Yeah. And so I could see out on their uh, like driveway, like boxes of old stuff. And some of it was like Christmas decor. And I was like, oh, man, this is so weird that I have this memory of this paper from eighth grade. And like the these were the de- decorations being described in the paper. What a it's very so specific weird. kind of nostalgia to be able to like. It's like this is extremely unusual. Wow. That yeah. honestly, that is that's that's kind of a remarkable story. I know. It's, so, um, yeah. Like but, no one probably I would be willing to bet that less than five people could have had the experience. Oh, yeah. Very. That, that you had with yeah. this. I don't but, think so. So, OK, my, my thing is so I, I like I live in a house that is like ripe for Christmas decorations. Like yeah. it's very like gingerbread looking. It does. Your house does have a gingerbread quality to it. It does. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like literally made of graham crackers. Mm hmm. Yeah. Not very good when it rains, but do you think we, gingerbread constantly. houses are not made out of gingerbread? Well, you said you, you make a good point. <laughs> I feel like I've made more gingerbread houses out of graham crackers than mm-hmm. I have actual gingerbread. OK, well, you know, sounds like maybe you're doing it wrong. Maybe, maybe I, I, the thing about gingerbread houses is like, do people eat them? Because it seems like you're taking a whole bunch of candy, smearing it together, and then putting it on display for no one, I, I think. Maybe for, like, the folks that come over for holidays. Yeah. But then, it, like, doesn't it just all go really stale? Yeah, I don't... I think you would have to, like, make it and then immediately eat it. Okay. But it also seems like if, you, if you've if you done really good gingerbread construction, you've probably used icing that was more intended for, 
you know, keeping everything together than it was intended for Delicious making eating. it take it taste good. Yeah, but that bothers me a little bit. I agree. It's, like, it's like, like borderline just using glue. What? Like if exactly. you're not going to eat it, just use glue. Just eat, right. <laughs> what is the point? It's like, no, because that's part of the chat. That's part of the charm of the gingerbread house. Is that it is, is it? edible, but nobody will. So that's a question for everybody out there. Do you eat your gingerbread house? Yeah. And what to, you decorate it with. If not, to what end do you make it? Here's the other problem with gingerbread houses is that it seems like the things you use to decorate it traditionally, and correct me if I'm wrong, are often peppermints. Yep. Gumdrops. Yep. And some kind of licorice. Yeah. These are, yeah. Which don't seem like they go good together. And let me just go ahead and say gumdrops, the most disappointing candy of all candy. Well, I like red gumdrops. Ben, that's not hard you can't, stop. That, I, well, yeah. I, I would get, I would eat a I would eat a bag of red gumdrops, but nothing I, looks more appetizing than gumdrops. Nothing looks as appetizing and tastes as horrible <laughs> as a gumdrop. As a gumdrop. The, the contrast is <laughs> the, horrendous because you're like, look at this little green and or yellow thing like drop of sugar covered in more sugar certainly it will crystallize sugar yeah which, certainly it's gonna taste exactly as i imagine like just like like lime or lemon or cherry covered in sugar and instead it is like i don't even know perfume dipped in flowers dipped in your mom's entire spice cabinet just just talking about it is making them stuck in my teeth there it's oh yeah i'm drunk yeah. i can't why can't and it seems like as long as I've been alive, I've been like, someone's going to realize how terrible gumdrops are and just do it right. Someone's going to figure it out and they're going to fix this. And then I can't tell if maybe they have. But every time someone goes to buy gumdrops, they're like, well, I'm not going to buy the expensive gumdrops. I'm just putting these on a gingerbread house. OK, here's what here would be my proposal is they yeah. just the company Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. Just makes gumdrops. For, oh, pl- Look, listen, but, Sour Patch. Yeah. Do that. Jay, uh, Jay held the mic. I had to, like, I wanted, he was I like, wanted, I'm talking to you now. Yes. Okay. So that's what we want. <laughs> we want Sour Patch Kids. Same ooey gooey material in the yes. middle. Uh, sour exterior. Sour exterior. Delicious. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, th- if that is the case and they come through, then we will have a gingerbread house building competition you and i okay we can we can live stream it for the little kernels so there you go there you go no that sounds amazing so anyway back to my story because i'm i'm like attempting and this has actually been something like for multiple years now i've been wanting to uh, like deck out my house and like Mm -hmm. really go all in on the christmas decor yeah like i want like one of those houses that's like very classically decorated mm-hmm. where it's like I, I've even gone through and my, my big issue is that it's expensive. Yeah, it's, it's very I mean, it's like a the the reason why everybody has like the boxes in their basement that says like Christmas lights or whatever is because Christmas lights add up. And if you're trying to cover an entire house, it's like it's so much money. And my house is like tall. It has like a lot of like vertical space. Mm-hmm. And so the other challenge I've been running into since I lived there is like every year it comes around. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to go in all in on this, I need to go and spend like several hundred dollars on the lights. Yeah. And I need a ladder mm-hmm. to mount it. And, and the ladder needs to be like 24 feet tall, big ladder, you know, to get up there so I can like mount all the stuff. But my game plan is to go like clips. Like I want to take like the individual bulbs and have them like mounted to like clips all the way up the shingles, the whole nine yards so anyway long story short i finally have the ladder tall enough to do it i've i've built up to that okay you know that's good i have the clips yeah and my my plan is to go with the c9 bulbs which is going to be your larger bulb okay which surprised me i know me too i can see it on your face right now you're like really not the small bulbs and it's like really not the small bulbs so when you say big is this like like if i'm thinking of like a traditional light bulb it, well, not as big as a traditional light bulb. Okay. That's gigantic. Yeah. That would be absurd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, this is a C9 bulb. It's 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 like, um, I'm trying to think of what would be it. Maybe the size of like a, a Bic lighter. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's not, it's not like spherical shaped. 
shape. It's not spherical shape. It's it's more like uh, teardrop shape. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but so the thing. So now I'm like I'm like okay. I'm gonna go to the store now. I'm gonna start buying my bulbs. So I like know what to have because it's like you know it's mid October now. I'm prepping f- to do this you know around Thanksgiving time. So I was yeah. like, I'm giving myself some runway. Yeah. You go and you know the 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 department stores have the lights lit up in front of you. So they're like, hey, this is like how bright the double bright ones are. This is how bright the whatever yeah and you like can compare the colors and all the led versus incandescent like all the stuff yeah so much to take in and you're you're looking at these c9 bulbs and i'm like well it's not bright enough and i and so i'm like so confused and baffled as to why or whether or not people out there who have beautifully decorated homes like are they even more invested than i think they are like Mm. like because i looked up professional grade bulbs and comparatively speaking, so like a strand of 100 bulbs, you know, from like a Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, LED C9, I think is like 30 bucks. Okay. And I'm like, OK, you know, I'm probably going to need like 10 of those or something right. to cover my whole house. So it's like $300 is, you know, it's a it's, bunch. It's a bunch to spend yeah. on bulbs. I go online. The same thing in professional grade bulbs, $225 for one single strand. Whoa. And it's like, well, goodness, my gracious, you're talking about twenty five hundred dollars now in order to cover this house. I don't, that cannot be what it people are doing. can't be what people are can't doing. can't be what people are doing. So like, is it the case that these, what appear to be dim bulbs in the the dark of night will just look better than I think they that's will? That's absolutely what's going to happen. That's what's yes, going to happen. That's okay. for sure the case. So it's, I'm not going to have this like kind of blah thing where I've, I've like now committed more money to you know then then i might do other things in order to accomplish it mm-hmm. and it's not going to be like a like a lackluster like i, I want it to be perfect it's going to be yeah you do, the last thing you want is to invest a lot of money and also it look bad yes yeah, yeah you put the nail right on the <laughs> hammer sure yeah that's yeah. the one <laughs> okay i think it is going to look better the, here's what i recommend is next time you're at the home depot or the lowe's just yeah. find you know your local um your your staff member who can assist you and just see can you turn off all the lights in the store yeah yeah and that's what i want because yeah it's hard to tell why are those stores so well lit yeah they've got those giant mega lights that have to fill the entire warehouse of the store and it's dimming dimming your experience trying to pick out your light how are you supposed to pick out light bulbs in the light you know my very question exactly i don't understand why they don't put a dungeon or a basement yeah. specifically for light bulb sales they need and they have them they could easily accommodate this i feel they need like a whole curtained off section in the store that is one street plus yard distance away from the light bulb so you can observe what yes. this light will look like from the street as people drive by okay you know what's going to happen yeah Corporate America is going to listen to this episode. They're yeah. going to be like, these guys just solve gumdrops. Here we go. Figure Christmas that lights. Out. Yep. All Done. in one. They're, they're holiday experts. That's right. Here, yeah, exactly. We've We're going to be the we holiday cheermeisters this year. <laughs> exactly. Cheermeisters. Grinching it up. Yes. Okay, so the last thing we have to solve then is how do we trick or treat? This is what we were trying to solve at the beginning. Oh, wait, how can people trick or treat? effectively and safely so because i think what's going to happen in places that allow it if it if if they exist if you if you dare is you'll have to probably have a bowl anyway probably but if you so i'm imagining what's going to happen is lots of people will sit outside near the bowl so that people can reach in but then you still have the problem of lots of people reaching in so should you have like, I was thinking maybe you could have like tongs or something so your hands aren't getting in there, but then everyone's going to touch the tongs. Okay. So here's, so here's my, you, my strat for you. How do we you. fix it? Right. Okay. And this, this is my thing too, because there's like, I, I am like mentally divided on whether or not it's better to try and like find a safe way to solve this problem or if any solution to solving the problem is then contributing to the larger problem, which is the then spreading of, you know, germs and such, which right. is like a greater issue at the end of the day. Yes, yes. Um, so the the only scenario that I've been able to come up with in my head is one <clears throat> where I like literally have almost like a like a PVC chute, mm, so to speak. Like a slide. Like a slide. Like a candy slide. Yeah. And yeah. so like, you know, then I would wear, <coughs> you know, mask and gloves and basically distribute, you know, like there'd be like a line that could come up and there'd be like a little sign that says like, hold your bag here, pillowcase here. Yeah. And, you know, they would hold it and I would like send down the chute the delicious candy, which would then fall completely, you know, hands-free, hands-free. In, into their right. Reservoir. This sounds like 
a good solution. Yeah. I think. And a PVC pipe, relatively inexpensive. There you go. Yeah. So that's like, that's sort of my, that's sort of my, my thought process. And I, and to be entirely Franklin honest with you, I, I have not even decided what to do about this. Mm. Because it, it feels like such a such a dicey maneuver. It does. So it, it's hard to even know at this point if it's going to happen. Right. And what to do. Because if it does, I can tell you I'm woefully unprepared on the candy front. Same. Yeah. I have none. Yeah. I think we've got, see, we've got like a bag, which I'm like, this. we may as well have no bags. Right. If 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 it happens because of the the traffic, we will right. so incur. Once upon a time, so I think it was my maybe second year at... My current home, I had by far and away the most trigger treaters that I've I've ever had come, yeah. and I had bought I don't even know um you know I, and again this is almost like the Christmas lights thing like I went to the store I want to say I spent like fifty dollars on candy yeah which felt like to me probably the most amount of candy I've ever or most amount of money I've ever spent on candy in like one go yeah uh for any reason and so I was like well this is this is like an infinite amount of candy fifty dollars worth of candy how could we possibly go through it well we did wow and uh I believe that somewhere around the time we ran out I ran to get a pizza yeah for dinner and so as I'm doing that Allie is like freaking out because people are still coming up to our house so she goes to the freezer and we have like a huge box of like uncrustables yeah and she's literally giving people frozen sandwiches amazing <laughs> as like our <laughs> little pbj little, little, little pbj you know why not little meal to keep you going on your uh, right say energized kids right right yeah <laughs> gotta get those calories in so you don't run out of energy make make multiple laps exactly yeah um so anyway that was that's been one of my my past halloween Highlights. Highlights. Giving so out PB and J's. Giving out PB and J's. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll have to keep people posted on how Halloween goes. Indeed. 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 Uh, in the meantime, well, since we've been talking a lot about delicious treats, it's kind of getting colder. Yeah. There's something that our that our dad pointed out to us. Oh, this was. Is this about the ice cream? It's about the ice cream. Okay. So yeah, background. I was at our parents' house last night for dinner. Wow. Yeah. And we had these apple tart things. And our mom began to complain that she can no longer buy chocolate chip ice cream at the store. Yeah. Yeah. And so at first, when you told me this, I well, a couple of things happened. One was, that's not a real problem. It's got to be there somewhere. Yeah. Because it seems like such a, a like base level ice cream flavor. Right. You know, it's like, like chocolate chip ice cream to me is... a effectively the same in the same category as like vanilla and chocolate ice cream it's a base flavor right you know like many people add things like cookie dough or yeah. mint flavoring mm -hmm. or uh the literal tracks of mousses yes into these ice creams in order to uh, you know then make them more moosen moosen yeah. yes precisely <laughs> but so the, that was one reaction was it's it's out there. You're just not looking hard enough. My second reaction was, oh my gosh, they always bought this when we were kids. Like, it was so disappointing. It's so disappointing. Because, because it wasn't moosin, and it wasn't cookie dough, dough and it wasn't mint. It was just <laughs> chocolate it, chip. And the, and the thing about the chocolate chips themselves is that they weren't chocolate chips. They were like chocolate flakes which yes. were frozen yes. rock solid. This is like when they put like gummies in ice cream and the gummies just freeze. Yeah. So when you like bite a frozen gummy bear, it just breaks your teeth. This is, this is the dangerous. Yeah. Whenever you're at, I think if you're, if you're getting ice cream at like a, at a, at a creamery, <laughs> is that the right word? <laughs> Let's go with it. They're scooping and you get to the end of this toppings. And I feel like, I don't feel like growing up, we were ever allowed to get toppings. <laughs> Maybe this is one of those things I was like, I can't even ask. You know, there's, I would be so embarrassed. Right, right, right. Like, yes. Oh. <laughs> that and appetizers. Like, like not acceptable. No, like, you know, do, people, do people actually fall for this stunt? <laughs> A meal before the meal? Yeah. Toppings on your ice cream. Anyway, if you, as an adult, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the gummies. It's like, it's. Turns out it's not a very enjoyable experience. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because they just freeze and or they're completely the wrong texture to go with your, with your creamy ice Even cream. Even if you eat it right away and it has it frozen, no good. But anyway, go on. So anyway, uh, uh, basically, I was having flashbacks to broken teeth as a child eating this chocolate chip ice cream and remembering that it was a thing. Uh, but then also, yeah, of course, you know, just, I just assumed it's out there, surely. So I started doing a little bit of research, mm. you know, to be like, is this a thing? Like, yeah. is, the, is there actually a an, an empty shelf in the freezer section 
where where meant to be chocolate chip ice cream, but no longer stocked. Right. Nothing but frozen cobwebs. Yeah. Which sounds really weird. Yeah. That Can you gross. imagine like a cold based spider, like an Arctic spider? That must exist. Is it? I don't Could know. Could it? it I'm I don't know look either. it up while you talk. Okay. Well, so anyway, it turns out that there has actually been a uh, a change dot org that went into bringing back vanilla chocolate chip ice cream. Mm cream and i was like oh no way like this has actually been a thing so like i clicked on the change.org link to see you know how do how's it how's it how's it performing like were they successful did they bring it back there were 36 supporters yeah no they Total. were not supportive it's like it's like why how how come there's no chocolate chip ice cream out there and it's like i was like this is why this because is why literally this is the this is like the type of thing the internet gets behind yeah you know where's like, the chocolate chip ice cream i would be willing to bet that we could get more people to sign a change.org for the Sour Patch Kids company yeah. to make Sour Patch gumdrops yeah. than people were able to get on board to bring back chocolate, chocolate chip, chip it's beca- I think, ice cream. I think we've already answered the whole problem, though, as we were talking about it. Yeah. Is that we were like, you know, it, it's like a base flavor. We would call it a base flavor that would sit next to like vanilla or chocolate or strawberry or something. Which I can't even imagine going to a store and finding just plain strawberry ice cream as I say it out loud. But maybe. Maybe you could. I imagine that's that's a classic base flavor. But also you would have stuff like cookies and cream or cookie dough or peanut butter cup or something. Right. And right. it's like if you're going if you're up if you need more chocolate than just vanilla, like you're if you're gonna be a bear, be a grizzly. You know, you're not going just to like chocolate chips. You're going all the way to cookie dough. You're going all the way to Heath bar. You get, like what? Why would you go? To, and, and and the problem is, as you said, the chocolate chips in chocolate chip ice cream were never were either. Yeah. Rock solid or they were so far and few in between as to basically just be the lightest bit of texture amongst your vanilla your ice, vanilla cream. ice cream exactly yeah. yep and so i think that that's that's exactly what it comes down to is that it's it's like it's almost like there were so many like once upon a time somebody was like hey vanilla ice cream like let, let's add some texture to that let's make chocolate chip and it was like ooh, yeah you go and then shortly thereafter someone was like let's add other stuff too and yeah. basically all of those people were more right yeah, ex- yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what those people were it's not there's nothing now that the chocolate chip was a bad idea you guys you guys got it chocolate chip right direction yeah just there was now that we've been in that direction for a while we've left it in the past we have we have yeah okay and let me add on that a little bit because i also think that there's another possibility that could have happened Mm. and this may not apply to everybody because i do think ice cream flavors are kind of like grocery stores they're like a little like regional so maybe not everybody gets the same brand sure of ice cream yeah that's true but but growing up we tended to have a brand called briars yeah maybe that's mainstream maybe it's not Mm -hmm. um but I'm pretty sure the logo for Briars is a mint leaf. Is it? I think it is. It might be. And so I think that like, th- this is like where my mind went. Like if I were to see chocolate chip ice cream and it was said Briars chocolate chip ice cream, oh. I would imagine that it was like the, the mint leaf would get me to mint, mint chocolate, chocolate chip, chip. And it would almost be like, oh, this isn't minty. Mm. What even? This is, that's also that. So if you do want just chocolate chip ice cream, you can still get mint chocolate chip. You can get mint chocolate yeah, chip because the, the Briars company realized that people were like, oh, that because quite frankly, well, actually, I don't know how they decided to put a mint leaf on there, because if there's anything that sounds like it would go with a dairy product worse, it's mint. No, I think we did, we determined in a different podcast that wine was the worst thing you can mix with a dairy product. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we thought of our worst <laughs> cocktail ever. <laughs> <laughs> which I think, we, which if you re- will recall, was white wine and milk. <laughs> T- terrible to even think about. Is- Someone shared on the Reddit, and it's like, you, not only is it actually a bad idea, but if you do mix them, like it will immediately curdle the milk. It's so, making my stomach turn just thinking about it. So it's, uh, it's. Not even a not even a really doable cocktail. <laughs> not even. Not even. No. Well, how about that? So there so, you go. All that to say, turns out that in fact, mom and dad, in case you're listening, uh, chocolate chip ice cream. It sounds like actually did go by the wayside turns- simply because there are better <laughs> options. <laughs> so sorry. Um, use your own chips, I guess. Use your own. Sorry, yeah, mom. DIY. We looked into it for you. We did. We did. There you go. Anyway. Okay. 
Also, let me just, I'm going to circle back to the very beginning, because I don't think we did a corny joke this episode yet. Whoa! I know. Look at you. Yeah. Thank you, special guest Jay. Yeah. Jazzy Jay. Other host. Okay. <clears throat> what was that? What? <laughs> Some I don't think the mic. <laughs> <laughs> So what's up? This is okay. I, I'm, I will get to the corny joke in a second, but what you just referenced you're wasn't. Gonna it. You're gonna lose it. I probably will. I probably will. What you just referenced was an Emperor's New Groove, like mention. It's like a sentence. It's not even like really a joke, but there's this like moment in the Emperor's New Groove where Cusco's like someone's throwing stuff, and I feel like you and I will use it so like randomly it's like it's like we're quoting something that like the context doesn't even usually apply no not really because he's what is it it's it's when he's potch is trying to start the fire right i think so yeah yeah or maybe he he throws an acorn and it hits him something happens and he looks up and he's like looking at me for someone's own stuff you can build fire yeah (laughs) you build a fire what's going on yeah He's uh, like he's like guilty, and he's like oh, change subject. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so stuff. So we like insert that into just I don't know random random conversation all yeah. the time. I feel like it comes up constantly. Yeah. Anyway, so corny joke. I'm yeah. ba- I got back to it. Okay. This corny joke comes from Little Colonel Mia N. All right. Mia N asks, "What is Batman's favorite fruit? What is Batman's favorite fruit? What is Batman's favorite fruit? Okay. Okay. I, th- I might know this one, and if this isn't the answer. It should be. It should be. Is it bananas? Yes, it is. You finally do it. Yay! What would you What would you have been like if I was like, no, it's pears? Like that doesn't even make sense. I'm trying to think of a good way. Yeah, how can pears be Batman's favorite fruit? That's that's the that's that's the real joke that needs to be answered. Yeah. That that is the joke. That's the question. The joke we is need that the punchline. The banana is so obvious that the joke is that it's not that. Yes. 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 Like you'd think, you'd think it'd be Arby's, but it's Long John Silver's. You get I, it? I do get it. Yeah. I, that's the that's like the what's the pirate's favorite <laughs> yeah. fast food restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. What's a pirate's favorite? Re- but you sell. It's like the third question in a row you ask. Yeah. 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 Where yeah, yeah. it's like, what's a pirate's favorite letter? And it's like, ah. Yeah. And it's like, what's a pirate's favorite restaurant? And it's like, you'd think it would be Arby's, but it's Long John Silver's, which also makes sense <laughs> because it's a pirate <laughs> restaurant. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Also, uh, new segment that I've completely not forgotten yeah. to bring up. Bring it on. What's this? A fun fact about coyotes. Oh, everyone's favorite segment. Everyone's new favorite segment. Yes. From Ben the Coyote Carlin. Okay, so I thought this was actually an interesting fun fact about coyotes, but did you know coyotes can have litters of pups up to 12, quite a few. Mm. I, I, I understand that you have three pups yourself. <laughs> That's so true. You could imagine how difficult 12 would be all at once. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I feel like there was like a like a shade that just got pulled over your eyes a little I bit. I don't think anyone in history has had 12 Tuplets. human ch- children at once. Yeah. Well, the good news is for coyotes yeah. is that uh, it, it does help that both the mom and the dad, coyote, raise the pups. Wow. Yeah. Kind of a, a, a more unique thing to coyotes, which typically allows them uh, a greater number of them to survive. So you hear like the phrase like a lone wolf. It's like there's n- not not a lone coyote. Not a lone coyote. Three yeah. ki- three coyote moon, as I always yeah. like to say. Or 12 coyote pup. <laughs> oh, know. man. Yeah. That's a lot of coyotes. So there's uh, some busy coyote parents there sca- scavenging for their young. But I just I love it. And actually, I also found this bit of information. They're like uh, monogamous. Oh. So they are like committed to their their mate. Man, look at them. Look I know. at coyotes. I know. It's I like I think I didn't I would have thought of coyotes as kind of like a a, a mean a maybe maybe they still are. Just like a mean animal that Well Yeah. There there's not no truth that they are like effectively scavengers. Right. They, they don't I yeah. mean, I guess they might hunt, like, really weak prey, but I always assume they're eating things that have already died. Or just about anything. Yeah. Anything or that's anything. edible. Yeah. Anything that's yeah. edible. They're like goats. Are, are goats that way as well? Goats will yeah, try and eat just about anything, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Fun fact about goats. <laughs> Is this going to be your thing? <laughs> no, it's not going to be my thing. <laughs> are you taking on goats? Absolutely not. 
Well, but why not though? Well, for, first of all, why goats when horses are a thing? Oh, good point. Are, good point. You know, good point. I right. forgot how much. For just for a brief, the briefest of seconds, mm. how much you love horses. Yeah, that's right. I'm heading into horse country this week. You are, yeah. yes. Heading out to uh, Kentucky. Heading out to Kentucky. So who knows? Maybe I'll see. Maybe I'll see a horse up close. <laughs> wow. I know. What an exciting thing. That so I, I it is not not part of my agenda this weekend because it seems like we will need some things to do, and if we can bring Luke to some sort of uh, horse interaction farm. As I'm sure they're known. <laughs> I can't think of a single better phrase. Definitely not. Definitely. Horse interaction farm would be great. Crusher's petting zoo. <laughs> well, well, you know, horse interaction farm. Ho- horse interaction farm. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that if you were to go to a if you were to go to a horse interaction farm, would you be going to the horse interaction farm for you or for Luke? Or oh, the hope oh, for both. Or the hope that your passion for I, horses It's hard would, to even say I have passion. But because I'm so it's like it's like I want it's it's a desire to be more interested in horses. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. Okay. So uh, I bring this up. I bring this up because last week's episode of the pop, we talked a lot about how you and I both know just so like so little about uh, music Mm. as like a piece of pop culture. Mm, True fact. Which is interesting for us. And actually it was it was one of the most. Uh, eye-opening moments was you pointing out the fact that it's even information like that you didn't retain because growing up, like like we said, you know, you could name the next door neighbor from like any cartoon we ever watched ever, even if it was like a one season run, you know, like all the characters of the show and yet like very little knowledge on music. And uh, we were riding bikes with our dad last weekend and I, I could not help but feel that maybe dad was having this moment of like, <clears throat> how was I so unable to get them interested in music? Like, yeah, he, he was even like a um, he is now a, a news anchor for like a television show. But, you know, got his start doing like a, a bit of like DJ work. Right. You know, was was a, a bit of a self-proclaimed like audiophile. Like, I think pretty. Intimate. Yeah, I think he at the very least was did like some, you know, top 40 DJ stuff, at least at the college radio station back when, you know, vinyl and. Eight, eight tracks were a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this was one of the... It felt like maybe he was having one of those moments where he he felt personally responsible for our lack of industry knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, my question to you would be, is there anything that you are particularly passionate about that you feel like... As like as a parent and like as you like raise your kids and the moments that you might like introduce something to your children as something like they could be interested in. Because I mean, obviously, you have tons of interests across a variety of different you know categories, whether it be like, you know, fitness endeavors or the things that we're into on Super Carlin Brothers, you know, or whatever going beyond that. Um, Is there anything in particular that you, you could not imagine like Luke reaching adulthood and, and 30 years from now you're out on the trails with him with his yeah. newfound mountain bike preparing for his adventure race that, mm-hmm. that he's totally into because you rubbed off on him in just the right way. Exactly. And uh, and he's like, yeah, I don't know anything about, you know, like Marvel. <laughs> that, would be, uh, like, that would be so surprising. Like, it, it's so weird that everybody like, what is Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be it would be very surprising to me if, yeah, th- uh, 30 years from now, Luke was just like, I don't I don't know. Like, I know. Yeah. Like Steve Rogers, like Tony Stark, like Black Panther. They're all just the same. Like, you know, uh, ugh, fan, like I am inevitable. Like, I know the lines. I know they kind of all go together. But I, don't, I can't like, I, you know, I can't imagine him saying that. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, but like, you know, that's uh, for me, I could probably do that, like with Star Trek. Yeah. Right. Where it's like, oh, like live long and prosper. You, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I've got like a bag of names for Star Trek, too. It's like, yeah, Captain Kirk and Picard. And one of them was Next Generation. Patrick Stewart. Eh. Spock. Yeah. Spock. Yeah. Zach Quinto, the best Spock. Everyone agrees. Every- <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, I only know I know Zach Quinto because I loved uh, his character in the show Heroes. Yes, he was Siler. And, oh man, it's like one of my favorite characters ever. So, so good, fun. so, so fun. good. Yeah, Heroes. Heroes is one of those shows. So this is like another thing. So there, forever, like we have grown up, like even like watching sports, and I feel like frequently during. Uh, uh, a, a good sports watch. Mm. There will be like a, a company who sponsors a trivia question at halftime. And it's like in the 1976 Super Bowl, who famously blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's always like, man, who would know that? Like, are people out there reading like the history books of sports? You know, but if you lived it and there's these like iconic things that are happening, you're like, okay, like 76, like, yeah, who who would that have been then? And like, who was, you know, Steelers were probably like really good back. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. You might be able to go back and based on your personal experiences, having lived through the era yourself, yeah. be able to like summon the bit of information. It might not be so obscure. Yeah. Um. And so I've, I, yeah, I guess I've wondered as, as we age through things and we're so aware of like the major, you know, pop culture events that happened in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. It's like, Luke didn't live through all that. Right. You know? So what, yeah, like what, what will be his like missing bits of thing? Right. Bits of, bits of knowledge. And it's, it's just, it was interesting to me, you know, now that you bring it up that dad might have felt that he like failed to impart on us, not like a, like a love of music. Cause I don't think that was his concern. Just like a, like the base knowledge of like base general knowledge. Right. Is what really more what it came down to. And it's interesting cause it's like, I didn't take zero cues from dad in the music department. It was just not into the world, like the the greater world of it. And I think, I don't, I don't know if it came across super, like I thought it came across clear. I saw maybe a few comments on the Reddit. It's like, I don't, I don't want people to think we don't like music. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, like I like music. I listen to music a lot. I have favorite songs. I, you know, I will get into a song and I, you know, listen to it just on repeat. I have artists I like, but as a, like a genre, like fan, like in the way you might not be into movies or you might not be into sports right. or something, I would say is in the same way that I'm not like into me. It's not like I'm like constantly searching for new bands or keeping up with the industry or new album drops or something, or, you know, knowing the general history knowledge that someone who was lightly into it was into. Right. Yeah. But you know, I, the way, however you're interested in music, great, fantastic. Oh, and so for me, and I don't know if I, you can, you can stop me if I did, but the interesting thing about me with music I have felt is that more often than not, I was into like the speakers, the sound system. Right. You were like, yeah. Like, and, and it was like, that was like a big priority to me always. Like yeah. I remember like with my first car, it was like, I was saving all of my money so that I could go and buy like, f- like a new like a new deck so that you could have like the super colorful, like display, you know, in the center console, yeah. uh, like new surrounding speakers and specifically subwoofers. Right. Uh, and Boom. I, re- I remember the day there was like a kid in my, in my grade and he had this like older Jeep. And I remember one day, he, like I went over to his house and he was like, yeah, I just put subwoofers in my Jeep. And I was like, what are subwoofers? And it was like, I didn't even know, right. you know? And he's like, Oh, let's go outside and like sit in it. And he like, you know, went and like turned on like a song that had like a big bass hit. And it was just like the whole car, you know, it was like vibrating. And I was like, yeah. I have to have it amazing like, now, you know? And so it, it was like, I like beelined it and to, I think best buy <clears throat> at the time I bought like a really like small, <clears throat> like entry level one and then like immediately upgrade. It's like a huge, like the one that like takes up your whole trunk. Right. And it was like, I was, I was so all about it, but then at the same time, not into music at like at all. So like, right. I was always like Googling, like what are songs with good bass hits? Right. Like literally what I was attempting to find were like things that were going to make the subwoofers just like roar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And same thing. Like when I got to college, I remember this was like this huge, right. Like, like thing. Like I was like, Oh man, when I get to college, I am going to like save up all summer. I'm going to buy like a surround sound system for my apartment. And it's going to be like a nice one, you know, not like, right. not like a pair of like computer speakers mm-hmm. that like someone's just like blasting. It's like, it's going to be primo crisp sound. Yeah. And so I saved up for an entire summer and I went and spent like, I mean, at the time it felt like a huge amount of money. It still sort of is. Uh, it was like $700. So it's yeah. like surround sound set up. And I got back to my, like, you know, to my apartment and like, I was like running the speakers, like in an apartment I was going to live in for nine months. Yeah. Mind you, you know, and I like literally like mounted yeah. the speakers no to one's the wall. Like surround sound yeah. in their college. Yeah. Yeah. Like running all the wires, like doing this whole thing. Uh, you know, it was like RIP security deposit because I put like 
a bazillion little holes in the walls to like, yeah. to, to, you know, to do everything. But, you know, so then I would, one, my parties were consisting of like my most immediate friends. Yeah. So you're talking like 11 people, you know, it was yeah. like, they were not like <clears throat> big wall to wall things. Yeah. And for whatever reason I had it in my head that you could not play like pop music. You had to play other stuff. You right. know, I, th- I have, have talked about this before. I'm I hearing my have. words. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, I was always just playing like super obscure like <laughs> songs that were like not in any way, shape, or form connected. But it was like this is making me look cultured. I think <laughs> like because I like all this different weird music. Well, this was the, yeah. It's interesting because you're like I have all this great this whole sound system, but then I don't know what to play. Yeah, yeah. Or like no confidence in your own like music selection right whatever so yeah i i actually on my old uh my very first my, my first youtube channel before we did super carl and brothers on like john curlin i want to say like the second or third video i ever made was about a similar problem i used to have in my car where often if you're the driver like this was the point where you would have like the ipod or something controlling your music in the car like you, yeah. there was like some plugin which made it difficult to navigate while you were driving and especially irresponsible if someone else was there right but you had this like some it felt like almost extremely personal to have someone else scroll through your library of music yep and like sort of see like what is this person is what are the things they've downloaded like what one-off random pop song did they get really into and download or whatever, you or, know. Yeah, or like, do you have Nickelback on here? Why do you have Nickelback? Yeah, it's Is like, this it, photograph? It felt like, it was, I don't know. Yeah, it felt like this weirdly like intimate thing. And then equally, uh, it, it, it felt like it on both sides. So if you were the person in someone else's car, and they're just like, yeah, play whatever you want. Just play whatever you want. And then it was like, do not tell me to play. Like, I no, just tell me what you want to play and I'll find it for you. Because yes. if you ask me, now I have this horrible burden of choose like revealing my taste in music yes. and you would think oh everything on here is fair game because obviously everything's their taste in music but it just felt like i ooh, i don't i i would be like paralyzed by this oh yeah you know i couldn't do it so it would always let's just talk let's just let, let's just talk or the answer would be like find something find like a funny song be like oh yeah it was like like find, find like a lonely island song yeah this is this is hilarious right can you believe i chose this <laughs> all right you know that was my that was my strategy for that kind of situation. Just just try to find like the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah, just like, find something ridiculous. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 No, I get that the completely. No, uh, but that was that was an issue. However, uh, I will. I, uh, I mentioned I did, that we took some music cues from my dad, and I'll say that he too, I think, was probably more into speakers than the music itself. I think so. At some I, point, I, I do remember that when we were kids, we had like two very large like speaker towers. Yeah. And then we had like this this like. It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It had like a glass door, yep. but it, it it had like just a stack of like stereo components. Yes, it attached was, to it. It was like Dad had walked into a Circuit City or a Radio Shack and was like, "I pretty much need one of everything. I need something to play records. I need a six CD changer. I need something to record tapes and make mixtapes. You know, yeah, one of everything. One of everything. I mean, to say it was." a waist high stack of audio componentry would be exactly accurate. Yes. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But I will say the style of music, I can't believe this didn't really come up last week that I really took from our dad was uh Jimmy Buffett. Yep. Yeah. Like if you guys want to know that was, that's easily my favorite, like longtime favorite artist, which growing up just felt like, yeah, this is like, cause I think we went on a bunch of ski trips and dad would like, he'd just be playing Jimmy Buffett the whole ride up. The whole way. And he would just be like, yeah, these are great songs. This is, I, this is, I'm into it. And it occurs to me now that as like a 10 year old, maybe Jimmy Buffett's a weird favorite artist. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But that like never occurred to me growing up. I was like, yeah, this is what I like. And like, so it's interesting though. I don't even think I understood there was like, there was such a culture around specifically Jimmy Buffett's music. Right. Which is uh, like, Parrot heads. They have like a name and everything. It's a huge thing. Huge thing. Yeah. Like it is, it is a culture, you know, and you know, I've seen, I've, you know, but I have been to, you know, several Jimmy Buffett concerts. I had probably five or six albums in my car. I, I had like live 
concerts that I would listen to. So my that that is definitely the deepest I've ever gone down one particular artist. Right. No. Yeah. And, and I remember that. And I remember like when you and a couple of your friends started going to that concert, like going to those concerts. And it was just yeah. this like to me as like your younger brother too, that almost felt like it became this like rite of passage. Oh. It was like, like, Oh, like you have to go to like a, <clears throat> like a big thing like this. And it's a huge outdoor party and it's so much fun. Um, well, that was the thing. I think the first one I went to, I was like 15. Yeah. And so the other enormous part, as you can probably tell by uh, the titles of many of his songs is uh, consuming alcohol. Libations. Like, yeah. Like drinking is a big part of the culture. Yes. Yes. It's like a yeah. It's a big beach party basically at is. all times. It's like living that that beach life at all times. But that's even, that's even the funnier thing too about like the Jimmy Buffett genre is that it's it's sort of like you can like name everyone who's in it. Yeah. Like you know there, there's like six artists who comprise like beach country hangout yeah. music. Yeah. If you want if you want to make a good beach playlist, all you really need is Jimmy Buffett and Kenny Chesney and Zach Brown band, and you've pretty much got that's yeah that's it. You done nailed it. You're yeah. Good. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Wow. Although let me say I've been to a Zach Brown band concert too, and one of the few concerts I really genuinely enjoyed being at in person. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was super fun. We were like down on the floor right near the stage. It was okay. cool. So that being said, that being said, I'll close out with my my first major <laughs> concert going. The, the Actually, the first ever concert I went to was Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah, we, you were there. I remember. <laughs> maybe, maybe this was the first misstep. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. This like, was our introduction to we, that, that was live the, music. Like we were so, like, I don't even know that we were so into Weird Al, but like we had the album Bad Hair Day, which uh, was, you know, obviously a bunch of parodies of song, which at that time, I didn't even know what the word parody meant. Mm -hmm. Like, so I knew the Weird Al songs before I knew the real songs. Right. Like, <clears throat> like when I heard um, like Gangsters Paradise or Gangsters in Paradise. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I oh always, boy. I always knew Amish Paradise. Oh, Amish Paradise. The, like, the superior version. Like that's, I was like, well, this is so weird. There's this like, like hip hop version of Weird Al's classic song. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, that was my first ever concert. But then in, um, somewhere in high school, a group of friends of mine and, and me got really into three days grace and breaking Benjamin and they were touring together and they were like going to do a concert, you know, in, in Roanoke. And so like we, we like bought tickets and like, that was even like a, like the idea of buying tickets to me. I remember I, it was like this like weird thing where it was like, it's like, I'm spending like a, like a lot of money on something that is not like a tangible, you get to keep it. It was like my first individual <coughs> experience with spending money on an experience. Right. Um, but I have to tell you, it was like, I cannot believe how well it went. Yeah. Like I went to the concert and it was like a very rare occasion where I knew all of the songs mm -hmm. and it was like a super happening thing. And as like a kid, I refused to dance basically anywhere at any time. I had no comfort for it. Right. But like on this individual night, like me and my group of friends, I was like, I got it. And there was like crowd surfing going on. And at, at this time I'm like, maybe 16. Yeah. And like quite literally crowd surfing yeah. at like a major rock and roll concert. Well, right. I, don't know, I don't know about major, but it was, there was enough people in it. And like one of my friends got like dropped, you know, which was oh kind of like sad, but like I didn't, yeah. and it was like the oh. trust exercise of people like just like moving you. And it was like, I don't know. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And then uh, I like left and I was on like such a high. And the weirdest thing was that like, I just never chased it. You Again. like didn't go back to it. Yeah. It was like, I was like, I don't know if, I don't know if a concert experience could ever be that good. Like, yeah. It was like, I like, I was like, that was perfect. I, I, was, I got it. I, I have <laughs> done concerts. I have done concerts. I will say the interesting thing is that I used to work at a concert venue, which is what compounds my embarrassment towards not knowing this stuff. Right. Is that I've met so many musical artists. You have, you have. <laughs> like especially, well, Especially for country, which I I do know a lot more like country music, right? Because that's what's popular in our area, and indeed what I enjoyed listening to a lot in high school. But uh, similar experience. My very first day on the job, um, there was uh, Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper were doing a concert at yeah. the venue, and this was my first. I don't even think I'd been hired yet. It was like you've been hired. You start on Monday, but if you want to come in Saturday night and sort of get the feel for a concert, you know you can come in and it was like, cool. And it's like, you know, I show up and you know, I, I couldn't, <laughs> this is like one of, again, I'm like out, you know, Oh, Alice Cooper's, uh, not a woman, you know, oh, right, you know, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like one of those situations you're like, okay, right, cool. Got it. Understand. Nice to meet you. Cool. Um, 
got to meet him. But it was one of those, like, I never really, like, loved going to concerts or anything. But I remember sitting there, and I was like, okay, I should just sit here and watch it, because this is so cool. What an opportunity to get to come see this concert for free. Yeah. And I sat there and, like, watch it, and it's, you know, Al Scoop and Rob Zombie did, like, really heavy metal, really loud, like, crazy uh, stuff. And I remember leaving a little before the end, and I, w- I got back in my car, and I had, like, just turned on the radio, and it was the local country station. And it was this very weird phenomenon where, like, even as I was listening to the concert, I was like, I don't think I, I-, I was understanding, like, how the environment was, like, enveloping me. But to sit in my car and, like, turn on just, like, country radio, it was like, wow, this feels so... Like, I understand why people like that kind of music because it is, like, so intense. Like, me sitting here listening to this doesn't even sound... Like, what a pathetic attempt at music. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, like, It's, like, What so is this guy sitting, sitting on a stool with an acoustic guitar? With, with a single guitar? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and meanwhile, there was, like, a wall of speakers and... Yeah, the whole building was vibrating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So that I was like that was when I first like realized like, oh, I understand why people really like this. Yes. Because it is like a it is like an adrenaline rush. Oh my kind gosh. Of thing. Anyway. Well, there you go. There we go. We we've learned so much more. We've ex- we, we've expounded. We've expounded. Yes. We've expounded. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop. <laughs> Again, if you want to go and check out those metal person cards that we have going on uh with your Patreon sign up between now and October 25th, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to these patrons who now support us over on Patreon, including Jason Flower, Eden Landry, Emily West, Haley Vance, Melanie, Stephanie. Stephanie S. Stewart, Mia Diana Lazo, Max Lazo, uh, Thomas Bonima, and Mat- Matthias Dalville. You got it. I got it. I well got done. It. I was doing so well. I was doing so well. Ah, man. I, I, I put a a lot of like pressure on myself oh. every every week. As well you should. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to make the sure I get it right. Is high. Yes. Yeah. Also, and, since we mentioned this and I didn't confirm it, the Arctic wolf spider is a real thing. What? Arctic spider. Arctic spider. Popular in Greenland. Popular? Not, not, pop- <laughs> <laughs> if you live in Greenland, you love. Pop, pop- <laughs> not popular probably to the citizens of Greenland, but uh, popular location, for, location them to live. for them to live. Got it, got Arctic it, got it. Arctic wolf spiders are all about Greenland. All about, <laughs> I was going to say. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Pop. Until next week. Pop, pop. Pop.